Welcome to New Spring at Home Easter. I hope you've enjoyed having church in your living room as much as I have. Now, I know this is different than what we're used to, but these past couple of Sundays have been such a sweet reminder that God is just as present in our homes as he is in our church building. And I believe he's going to continue to move through this special sunrise service we have planned for you. So get ready to worship and hear a powerful message from our brother, Clayton King. Now, whether you're new here or you've called New Spring home for years, someone from a local campus would love to connect with you. All you gotta do is go to newspring.cc, click connect to a campus, and one of our teams will be in touch. All right, family, it's that time. Turn up the volume, open up the New Spring app, grab a cup of coffee or tea like me, and get ready for New Spring at home.
Amen. Amen. Well, all over the state of South Carolina, from the top of the state to the bottom, from the coast up to the mountains, happy Easter, New Spring Church, and welcome to a very special Easter edition of New Spring at Home. It's a season when we have been socially distant, but we are spiritually unified today, and we wanted to bring to you a special, special sunrise Easter service, and so we thought, what a better location than to bring you than the beautiful upstate of South Carolina and get everybody in the same space together. And if you've been joining us from New Spring at Home, then you know this. These gatherings have been unique. They've been awesome and special. And I want to go ahead and allow every single person in every single room, maybe you're joining us from some other place in the world today. And here's what we're going to be doing in just a few moments. We're going to be leaning into the Word of God to a gospel message. But one of the things we do in these messages is we stop and pause for just a moment and we'll answer some questions in the room that you're in. So I want to just remind everybody to go ahead and determine who's going to be the person in the room who facilitates that conversation. Who's the leader in the room? If you don't know who it is, everybody point to them on three and you'll determine it right now. Ready? One, two, three. That's the leader. All right. And so we'll pause for just a moment in this sermon and we'll be able to dialogue a bit on this special Easter service day. And it's going to be a great, great, great celebration. I also want to say this. This is the time in the service where we would typically bring our tithes and our offerings. And man, we know this. The kingdom of God moves at the speed of sacrifice. I want you to think about how many sacrifices we've seen in our world in the last couple of weeks. We've seen nurses and doctors sacrificing on the front lines. We've seen moms and dads in homes sacrificing. We've seen teachers sacrificing. We've seen uh, civic leaders sacrificing. We've seen lots of sacrifice and the opportunities for the kingdom of God to advance have been great. And the same is true in these moments as a church. As we come together and we bring our tithes and our offerings, we, we're able to sacrifice that the kingdom of God and the message of the gospel might go forward. I want to say thank you to New Spring Church for the way you give. But I also want to remind anybody that's a, leaning in today, that's a part of another church, please remember to give and bring your tithes and offerings to your church home because your church right now needs them as much as any time in human history because of all of the opportunities to do ministry in these critical days. And so if you want to do that, you can do that at newspring.cc, uh, and you can do that in this time. Uh, now that everybody's getting ready and getting set, I want to tell you, we've got a special message, and Pastor Clayton King is going to be bringing the message today, the, the special Easter message. So get out your notebooks, open up your app, and get ready for the gospel good news on this Easter morning. Welcome to New Spring at Home Easter edition. Let me pray for us, and Clayton will come. Father God, thank you now for this message. Thank you for the hope we have in Jesus. Thank you that in these days of death, in these days of sickness, we know the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you for this gospel good news today. Bless us now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, let me greet you today in the same way that all the Christians in the earliest days of the church greeted each other on Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And uh, this is a new way to celebrate Easter. I don't know about you, but I've never done it quite this way before. It's a great way to celebrate right there in your home with family and friends. And I thought we could start the day off today celebrating something good, okay? Easter candy. Easter candy. Let's talk about that for just a moment before we dive in uh, to celebrating the resurrection. Could you take a moment right there in your home with your family or your friends where you're gathered, and I want you to go around the room, and I want you to tell everybody in the room what your favorite Easter candy is. I'll go ahead and tell you what mine is. Kit Kats. Okay, ready? Go. Well, I hope that you uh, got some uh, good information about the people around you. I know some of you think that Peeps is the best Easter candy. Uh, I know that some of you probably think Reese's Cups. Uh, I'm a Kit Kat guy myself, so I hope that you've settled that right now in your space. Hey, what we want to do today is we want to go to the Scripture, and we want to see what happened on that first Easter Sunday morning. We celebrate Jesus' 
being raised from the dead on this day because this day marks our hope as believers. This day marks the greatest event in human history. And what a time for us to be able to celebrate Easter right now as a human race. Everything that we're going through right now, not just as a nation, but as the planet, we are all thinking about the same thing. We're talking about the same thing. We are being affected by the same thing. We're worrying, we're discussing. Some of us are experiencing the fear or the anxiety of the unknown. What a great blessing for us today that we can go to the Bible and we can find in the scriptures hope for a better tomorrow. And we wanna read this from Luke chapter 24. And I wanna show you that there were some things that happened on that first Easter that can encourage us today as we remember the promises of God. In Luke chapter 24, Luke tells us this account of Easter, the first one, Luke 24 verse one. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb bringing spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified and they bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Asked the men. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, it is necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Isn't this amazing how when they went to the tomb, nobody expected nobody. They thought Jesus' body would be there. The women were the first ones to go to the tomb that day. The Bible says that they brought spices that they had prepared for the burial of Jesus. His body had already been laid in the tomb, but they were going there to prepare him for burial. And when they approached the tomb that day, they walked in and they found no body. But what they did find were the angels of the Lord. And the angels asked them a very important question. And I'm just gonna say right now, any question an angel asks us, that's an important question. And here's the question I wanna key in on for just a moment. Why do you seek the living among the dead? That's a great question for us today. I think in this moment we find ourselves in with the, with the world that we're living in and the conversations we're having around the uncertainty of our time. We're watching stock markets go down. We're watching investments go down. We're seeing athletic seasons be canceled. Kids are doing school at home. Our lives have been disrupted. We're watching the news and we're reading reports of things that we can't control. And you're probably wondering a lot like I am, what does the future hold? We don't know what the future holds, but we believe in a God who is stronger than any worst case scenario, a God who can raise his son from the dead. When they get to the tomb that day, the angels ask this question, a question that I wanna ask you right now. Are you seeking for life among dead things? Do we find our hope and our peace in things outside of Jesus? Do we find our hope and our peace in money or in success or in a retirement plan? Uh, do we find our hope and our peace in some plan that we've constructed of what our lives will look like in the future? I think we can all agree that the days we're living in right now, if they've proven anything to us, they've proven to us that none of us can predict the future and we should not try to find life in dead places. Hey, sports are great. I love sports. It's good to have some money set aside for a rainy day. There's nothing wrong with that. But we just can't find life in those things. We're, a lot of us, being reminded now of how important family is. 
We're being reminded of how important conversation is. We've got time on our hands to sit at a table and eat a meal with people that we love. In this story, the angels say to the women, remember what Jesus told you? Remember the promise he made to you when you were in Galilee? He told you that he would be delivered into the hands of sinful men, put on trial and crucified. And he told you that he would be resurrected on the third day. Don't you remember? I wanna ask you this question right now. What promises has God made you that maybe you've forgotten? You know, we get busy with life. We get distracted by all the things that we have to do. And so much of life that we live looking forward into the future can lose in our own minds the promises that God has made us before. So I want you to take a moment right there in your home, right there in your living room, right there where you're gathered with family or with friends or in your apartment. And I want you to right now remember some of the promises that God has made you. Why don't you make a list? We're gonna go around the room right there uh, as a family and as friends and let's see how many promises we can remember that God has made us. Take some time right now and build a list of the promises that God has made you and it'll stir up faith in your heart. I find it really beautiful in this passage of scripture to see that as soon as the angels reminded the women of the promise Jesus had made them, that he would die and he would be raised from the dead, as soon as they remembered the next thing they did, they returned. Where did they return? Back to Jerusalem. And why did they go back to Jerusalem? Because they had to tell the disciples that they had been to the tomb and it was empty. They had to tell them what they had seen. They remembered the words of Jesus, they returned back to their friends, and they reported everything that they had seen. Now, why did they have to go back to Jerusalem? Because the disciples were afraid. They knew where they were. They were hiding in the upper room. They knew that the same people who had crucified Jesus were now going to try to find them. They feared for their lives. They had panic in their hearts. They had a lack of peace. There was uncertainty about their future. Jesus, who they had put all of their faith in, has just given up his life on the cross. They knew he had died, but they had not remembered his promise of resurrection. So when the women get to Jerusalem, what do they do? They tell the disciples. They tell them, Jesus isn't in the tomb. He's alive. Some of them believed the Bible says others of them thought it was nonsense and they didn't believe, but Peter had to find out for himself. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Luke 23 that Peter actually went. Verse nine says, they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the 11 and to all the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them were telling the apostles these things. But these words seemed like nonsense to them, and they did not believe the women. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. When he stooped to look in, he saw only the linen cloths, so he went away amazed at what had happened. The story of Easter is all about telling good news. There's a lot to be told in this story. Let me show you. Jesus told them that he was going to be crucified and resurrected from the dead. The angels told the women that Jesus was not in the tomb. He was alive. The women go back to Jerusalem and tell the disciples that they have seen proof of the resurrection. And then the disciples, they tell the world. And that's what I'm doing right now. That's what we do as a church. We tell the good news that there is life in Jesus Christ. So don't look for life in dead things. I'm telling you right now, I believe that Jesus is literally, actually, really alive. And listen, let's just be honest. The time of life we're living in right now is unlike anything any of us have ever seen. When in human history, 
have 7.6 billion people been talking about the same thing, grieving the same reality, un unaware of what the future holds, hoping for a cure or a vaccine. Nothing has ever affected the entire planet and the entire human race like the coronavirus. But I also believe that in the midst of that fearful thought, God is opening hearts to the reality of the gospel. People are talking about death. People are having conversations about what matters most. I tell you what I'm hearing from people. I'm hearing people say, I forgot how important it was to take a walk with my family. I forgot how meaningful it was to sit down at a table and have a meal with my wife or my husband and my kids. Never in human history have more people been aware of eternal things and we're all being reminded of the fragility of life. Life is fragile. The Bible promises us that we will all die and we will all stand before God. I've got good news for you today. In the same way that Jesus told the women he would rise from the dead, in the same way that the angels told the women to remember the words of Jesus, in the same way that those women told the disciples Jesus was alive, and in the same way the disciples told the world the good news of the resurrection, I believe Jesus is telling you something right now. Can I ask you that question? Is Jesus speaking to you right now? Is he encouraging you to remember a promise? Are you feeling the good news take root in your heart right now? Let's pause for just a moment. And right there in your home, right there in your room, I want each of you, to just think about and remember the best news you've ever received in your entire life. For me, I think the best news I've ever received was when I found out that we were pregnant with our first child. I remember the joy that filled my heart. Could you do this right now in your rooms? Go around your rooms and just out loud, remember the best news you've ever received and let that stir up faith and joy in you. Do that right now. Isn't it great to feel those memories, kind of bring back the emotions, those good feelings when you heard good news and it stirred you up and made you aware that something good was coming? Hey, whatever that good news is, the best news you've ever heard in your life, it's nothing compared to this good news that we celebrate as believers. That Jesus Christ is not dead, Jesus Christ conquered death. And in the same way that Jesus conquered death then, Jesus conquers our sin now. I've had to ask myself over the last few weeks, do I actually believe that I will be raised from the dead one day? Because I know that I'll die. We're all going to pass away eventually. But the hope that we have is that God's promises are true and there is a resurrection into a new kingdom, a new heaven and a new earth that waits for us. And that resurrection is possible because of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. You know, Jesus was laid in a borrowed tomb. I believe Jesus borrowed that tomb because he knew he was only going to need it for a little while. He intended to give it back. And after three days, that is exactly what Jesus did. Think about this. The best thing that's ever happened to us is a result of the worst thing that ever happened to the best man who ever lived. The best thing that ever happened to us was Jesus dying on the cross in our place to take our sin away from us so that we would not have to withstand the punishment we deserve. Jesus loved us enough to be the sacrifice for us. But Jesus didn't just die to take away our sin. Jesus also rose from the dead to give us a brand new life. And that new life is available to you right now. Maybe more than ever before, you're aware that life will not go on forever in the flesh. And you're thinking about eternal things. Let Jesus speak into that moment in your heart right now. You can begin a relationship with Jesus. What is Jesus telling you right now? He's offering you resurrection life. He's offering you hope and joy and peace. And guess what? 
Eternal life doesn't begin when you die. Eternal life is happening right now. It's happening right now in your home. It's happening right now in your heart. And I want you to know that I believe the best news I could ever share with you is that not only is Jesus alive, but Jesus loves you. He loves you. He cares what happens to you. He cares about your eternity. And he has secured a place for you in the new heaven and the new earth when you put your faith in what he did for you on the cross. So hey, I just wanna invite you right now. Listen to what Jesus is telling you. And if you are ready to give your life to Christ, you can begin by asking him into your heart. It's as simple as that. So right where you are in your home, in your apartment, in your living room, watching at your kitchen counter or your kitchen table, by yourself or with friends around you, you have the opportunity right now to connect with the resurrected Son of God. He's speaking to you. Listen to what he's saying. So if you're ready to open your heart up to Jesus, to give him control of your life, to trust him, to take away your sin, and to give you an eternal life in heaven, here's what you can do. You can repent of your sin right now and invite Jesus in. Would you just pray this to Jesus right now? Whether you leave your eyes open or whether you close your eyes, what's important is that you open your heart. Ask Jesus right now to come into your life. Pray this to him right where you are. He's listening. Jesus, I need you in my life. I believe in the resurrection. I believe you died in my place. And I give you control right now. I'm asking you into my life. I wanna know you, Jesus. So please save me now. I give you my past and I give you my future. I give you everything, Jesus. Thank you for loving me. I wanna live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you did just ask Jesus to come into your heart, congratulations, you've just taken your first step towards Christ. And if you did just pray to receive Christ by faith, I want you to do something. I want you just to take out your phone and I want you to text the word Jesus to 30303. Simply Jesus to 30303. And that'll give us an opportunity to follow up with you as you have begun a new relationship with the resurrected Son of God, Jesus Christ. I wanna pray for you and thank God for what we've just experienced together. Jesus, we gather our hearts together, celebrating your resurrection to give you thanks, to give you praise for what you did on our place on the cross when you died for us. And thank you, Jesus, that you are alive. We sense your presence, we acknowledge that you are Lord, and we celebrate you today, Jesus. In your name we pray, and in your name we live. Amen. For creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues, the little one cried. Then from north to south and east to west, we'd hear Christ be magnified. Were the whole earth echoing his eminence? His name would burst from sea and sky From rivers to the mountain tops We'd hear Christ be magnified Oh, be magnified, God And oh, Christ
praise be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Be magnified in me. When every creature finds its inmost melody, and every human heart is native cry. Oh, then in one in raptured hymn of praise, we'll sing Christ, be magnified. Oh, be lifted high, singing, oh, Christ, be magnified. Let his praise arise, Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Be magnified in me. I'll stand strong and worship you If it puts me in the fire I'll rejoice cause you're there too I won't be formed by feelings I'll hold fast to what is true And if the cross brings transformation I'll be crucified with you Cause death is just the doorway into resurrection life And if I'll join you in your sufferings Then I'll join you when you rise And when you return in glory With all the angels and the saints My heart will still be singing And my song will be the same Oh, Christ be magnified Let His praise arise Christ be magnified in me Oh, Christ be magnified From the altar of my life Christ be magnified in me We're singing Oh, Christ be magnified in me Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life Christ be magnified in me yeah. Be magnified in me Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art. Thou art. Oh, you sing, then 
sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Amen. How great is our God. What an incredible service we've had today. And we think about this in all of our homes and across the globe today. There is one name that is bringing hope to homes. One name that is bringing hope in the middle of a virus. One name that is bringing life in the space of death. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. And you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 tells us that all the promises of God find their yes in Jesus Christ. And I know in the sermon, Clayton brought this up and you got to talk about it in your living room and maybe you were able to name several promises. But I just want to say to you, if you receive Jesus Christ today, every single promise in this scriptures, thousands of them, all of his blessings are now yours in Jesus. And so we thought, how could we conclude the service today, but to remind our souls, remind our families of the great blessings that we have in Christ. I want to turn our eyes to an Old Testament blessing. It's in the, it's in the book of Numbers chapter 6. And it's known as the Aaronic blessing. It was a blessing that God gave to Moses and Aaron, and he asked those first pastors to put the blessing on the people of God. And here's what that blessing says. It says this, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This morning, we've talked about what God has done in our past, but I want to stir you for your future. God has more blessings in front of you than he has behind you because of the resurrection power of Jesus. As we sing this song together today, I pray that your heart will turn towards your future and the hope you have all the days of your life, your kids' lives, your grandkids' lives, the great-grandkids you don't even know yet because all of them are going to be blessed because of what Jesus Christ has done. Let's sing that truth together now.
make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Oh, He received. Amen. message. And here's some more good news. It doesn't end here. We have so many resources available for you. If you started a relationship with Jesus, text 30303. Someone from our church will walk you through your next steps. Our website, newspring.cc, is a great tool to get connected with someone from a local campus. And we can't forget about our little ones. You can also go to our website for Kids Spring special Easter service, the best day ever. And one last thing, Make sure you follow us on social media for updates. We'll see you next week for New Spring at Home. And don't forget, we're gonna get through this as one big, no ordinary family. <laughs>